Hi everyone, this is the Billiards Doctor. For today's video, I want to teach you guys about bridge length. So there's different types of bridge lengths that you can have. So, or different lengths of bridges. So the ideal bridge length that you should be going for is usually between six to nine inches. And what this means is that if you look at the place, this is my bridge hand, right? The place that the cue hits on the bridge hand to the point, the closest point of the cue ball, that's the bridge length, okay? So like it would start on this little curve here where the cue hits my hand going to where the tip of the cue ball is the very front of the cue ball, right? So if my bridge length is short, right? If my bridge length is short, an example would be like being like this. See how close my hand is to the cue ball? The long bridge length would be like way back here. This would be a long bridge length, okay? And there's disadvantages and advantages to both, okay? Use them in different scenarios. Um, like I said, ideally you want six to nine inches. Um, some of the better players are able to get away with having a longer bridge length. You see sometimes Shane will have a 10 inch, 11 inch bridge length possibly. Now, what that does is it allows you to generate more acceleration, more spin, more speed. You can imagine, it's kind of like, you know, swinging a baseball bat, right? Like if you're trying to hit a baseball, right? And um, you only go back here and you try to hit it, you're not gonna get as much power as if you go way back here to start and you go all the way, right? So if you go all the way back here, more power. That's the same thing in pool. So if you have to do a ton of backspin or a ton of top spin, right? It's gonna be really hard if you're close. That's much harder than if you get, you can use the full bridge length and you can really dig into it. Okay, so what I'm getting at is you have to vary your bridge length oftentimes based on the shot you're taking. If you need more spin and more power, you may have to have a longer bridge, but ideally you don't want the longer bridge. Now here's why you don't want a longer bridge. So I just talked about how it's all about where it is on the hand, okay? So if I can, you can imagine that if my bridge length is massive, like I have a 15 inch bridge, my bridge is way down here, right? If I move the back of my cue, this is the back of the cue, if I move the butt of the cue a little bit downward, the cue tip goes way upward. See that the cue tip goes way upward. A little downward, the cue tip goes way upward. What that means is when I'm trying to hit pinpoint precision, on this cube, I'm trying to hit exactly the point I want, to get the perfect position, right? If I bury my back arm a little bit, if my back arm was a little bit down, a little bit up, a little bit side, it's gonna cause a huge variation in, in the Q-tip. So if I wanna hit top spin here, and my Q-tip goes a little bit down, then I'm not, I'm gonna the Q-tip, the, sorry, if I wanna put top spin on this ball, meaning I wanna hit high, right? But my back arm goes up a little bit, the Q-tip goes way downward, like it's like a teeter-totter, it goes way downward. So I'm not gonna hit that position I want, I'm not gonna get the spin I want, right? Whereas if you have a very short bridge, meaning like your hand is very close to the cue ball, and you move the back arm a little bit, notice how the Q-tip barely moves, okay? So that's the reasoning why ideally you want a shorter bridge length, unless of course, if you need to have a longer bridge length, because you have more possibility for error if you have a longer bridge. And if you notice, like sometimes people try to do these massive backspin shots and they have a huge bridge length, they come all the way back and they, they, they miss cue. Well, a lot of that's because there's so much room for error when you have such a long bridge. But if you want to get that extra long backspin, sometimes that's the only way to do it is to have that extra long bridge. Okay, obviously this is going to vary based on what type of shots you have, but it's something that you should keep in mind. Um, so some of the professionals you see will have a longer bridge length just because they've, they've, they're good enough or they're so precise that they can do that, but ideally you don't want that. One other thing to keep in mind is your bridge may vary based on the vision, okay? So the vision. So what happens is the closer your hand is to the cue ball, the less you can imagine your hand's closer, your head's also closer. When you're closer, meaning my head is closer this way versus like when my bridge is longer and further back, you actually can't see the line as well. So when you're further back, like you're way back here and you line up, you can see the line much easier. So if you have a really long shot, if you're like at the other end of the table and you have a really long shot like this, so I don't know if you can see the camera, but I'm way at the other end of the table and the cue ball and object ball are close together, right? If I have a really long shot like this, having my hand really close is actually gonna be harder because my head is closer to the object ball. So when my head is closer, right, when my head is closer, all of a sudden I have to look more downward. I can't see the pocket. I can't see where I'm aiming as well. So that's something to keep in mind that sometimes you may have to adjust your bridge length based on your vision and how 
far you're shooting and the sight. That's just something to keep in mind. That's something you kind of adjust to over time, but I wouldn't pay too much attention to it. Really try to focus on that six to nine inches. And if you're longer than six to nine inches, you should really try to cut back because it's very when you're helpful. doing your bridge length. You really need to use the whole bridge. Whatever bridge length you decide to use, use the full length of it during your shot. So what I mean by that is if I'm taking a shot at this three ball here, right? It doesn't, it makes no sense for me to have a huge bridge length. My hand is way back here. Bridge is massive, but only bring it back to here and just poke at it. Bring it back to here and poke at it. That, that's not, that defeats the purpose of having a long bridge. The whole point of having a long bridge is that you get lots of acceleration, lots of power, lots of spin. So if you're gonna do that, if you're just gonna poke at it, you might as well just have a short bridge. You might as well just have a very short bridge like this. You're gonna be much more accurate. So really keep that in mind. You watch all the professional players, very, very, very few times will you see them not use the full bridge. For example, watch Shane. Shane is a huge bridge, but every time he takes a shot, he goes all the way back. See how the tip of the cue, see how the tip of the cue is going all the way back to the point here and then it's going through, or it's getting really close. You aren't just poking it like that. It's going all the way back and then all the way through. Okay, so whatever you decide to do, make sure that you use the whole length of that bridge during that shot. Like I said, ideally you want a shorter bridge, six to nine inches. If you don't believe me, that's fine, try it out. You will be more consistent. You will not bobble pocket as much. Just try it out because it'll just give a little bit less possibility for error if you have that shorter bridge length between six to nine inches. And it's difficult. There's a lot of people get in bad habits of having really long bridge lengths, but, and it has its time and place. You can bridge over balls, all sorts of things, but that's what you're going for. This is the Billiards Doctor. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more videos.